If you, like me, are expecting another market downturn, then listen up. In this video, we're gonna talk about how you and I can make sure we're prepared for that next great buying opportunity. He who has cash in a recession is king. When other investors are frantically selling off their assets, he who holds cash has power in that situation. You have the power to decide when you want to buy at prices that are suitable for you. A market crash like the one we saw in March is the result of investor sentiment. And what I mean by that is a lot of investors had very bleak, fearful outlooks for the future. Because they didn't know what the future looked like, they competed with each other to sell off their stocks quicker than the next person. What this does is it creates this, uh, this situation where a bunch of sellers are competing with each other and undercutting each other on price. Investors hear the news that there's this virus that's spreading across the world, shutting down economies. Well, investors are going to say, oh crap, there's probably going to be a market collapse. I'm going to quickly sell my shares now at $4.80 just before the market tanks. And then another investor comes in who's holding those same shares and says, well, I'm going to sell mine at $4.75. And then another jumps in, I'll sell for $4.72. And they undercut each other. And what that does is it just causes all this downward pressure on prices. And what the buy side of the market will do is other investors who'd normally be buying will see that. They'll hear the same news and say, oh, I'll step back. I don't want to be the one left holding the bag when everything's gone to zero. So instead of buying, they'll actually withdraw their buy orders and say, you know what? I'm just going to sit back and watch what happens. And ultimately it creates this situation where all of the buyers in the market step back and all of the potential sellers in the, in the market come rushing in to sell off their equities. And it just results in this, what we saw in March, a complete free fall of the value of stocks. Okay, so we know what happened. We understand why the prices go down sometimes and that it's based on market sentiment. But how can we prepare for the next time that that happens? Well, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, looking at the US stock market and looking at even the Australian stock market, you've seen this big jump in recovery of the stock market from March where it's bottomed out and just bounced almost vertically straight back up. Now, if you're like me and you're looking at that and you're thinking, I'm not sure if that's really reflective of reality, then there are a few things that you can do to make sure that you're prepared to buy if the market goes south again. Because if the market goes south again, you can be sure that there's gonna be a lot of opportunities to buy really good companies at really good prices like we saw in March. So how can you do that? First, it's important to understand what a store of value is. So traditionally, investors have seen commodities like gold and silver as stores of value. Investors treat these asset classes like a way to store their wealth, such that in really bad times, at least their nest egg will be protected from going to zero. Gold has the longest track record of being a store of value in human trade, from my understanding. I could be wrong. But in the modern day, there are a few different types of stores of value. In this video, I'll look at just two. We'll just talk about gold and silver. Now, some of you may be thinking, but what about other types of stores of value? Now, Bitcoin is another example of a store of value type asset. However, it's quite new. And um, whilst I personally hold Bitcoin for this reason, I'm not gonna talk about that in, in this video. We're just gonna talk about gold and silver. Now, because investors perceive gold and silver as stores of value, that means that as the equity markets start to decline, which means when investors start selling off their shares rapidly and the prices fall, what actually happens is prices of gold and silver actually go up. 
And why this is, is investors sell their equities and then they use that cash that they got from selling off their stocks to buy gold and silver so that they can store that wealth without it crashing down with the rest of the market. And ultimately what that does is it increases demand for gold and silver, which pushes the price of gold and silver up. So what we can do is if we're anticipating another market downturn, we can actually use some of our cash that we already have, or if we've made some good profits on some of our equities, some of our stocks, we can sell off some of those and then move those profits or move that cash into gold and silver. Now, I personally wouldn't be putting too much of my portfolio into gold and silver. I would probably aim for say 10 to 30%. Some people that are really confident that the market's gonna crash, they might put 50% of their portfolio in gold, for example, because that means that, well, if the market goes up, their equities will grow their gold probably won't, or maybe it'll even go down a little bit, but they'll be protected from the downside risk. However, if the market actually goes down, their equities will decline, but their gold will go through the roof. Now the benefit of that is, if the market crashes and you're holding a decent amount of gold in your portfolio, once you're happy with how far the market's fallen in terms of, you know, you might have a few stocks or companies that you wanna buy, and you know the price that you kind of want to aim for and you see the market fall off a cliff and all of a sudden that stock you want to buy is trading at or below the price you're willing to pay for it. Well, if you're holding gold, it will have gone up in value. You can actually sell that gold for more cash than you would have had. So then you can buy more of the stocks that you wanted to buy at a discount. And that means that you know, when that next recovery happens, when we bounce out of the bottom again, you'll stand to come out very far ahead. Now, while some investors will talk about buying physical gold and silver, I'm certainly not opposed to that. However, for the reasons that I would be using gold and silver in my portfolio, I'm not concerned about holding actual coins of silver and gold because I can't quickly convert that to cash to buy stocks when they're selling at a discount. So what we can do instead is we can buy gold and silver ETFs. Now, as I've spoken about in another video, ETFs are exchange traded funds that you can buy a piece of and those funds own some underlying assets. So there are two that I'm gonna look at for this video. The first is PM Gold. Now, PM Gold is Perth Mint Gold. This is an ETF that is backed by the Australian government and is backed by real physical gold held within the Perth Mint. So that means that each share of that ETF that you buy, you have a claim to the physical gold within the Perth Mint. Now, the beautiful thing about this is if you buy PM Gold as an ETF, and then the market crashes very quickly, you know, on a Wednesday, you can decide without flying over to Perth to get the physical gold, you can say, oh, I'm happy with the price of equities now. I've had a good return on my gold. I'm gonna sell that gold like that through my brokerage account on the open market while all the other investors are trying to buy those gold ETFs. You can sell it to them for a profit and then convert that cash straight away into buying whichever shares you wanna buy. Maybe you'll end up getting after pay under $10 again, who knows? Now the second ETF that we can consider investing in as a store of value and as a hedge against the downside risk of the market falling is ETP MAG. Now this is a silver ETF. In the same way that Perth Mint is gold backed, ETP MAG is silver backed ETF, which means that for each unit of the ETF that you own, you have a claim to physical silver that that ETF owns. Now, one interesting thing about gold and silver is that gold traditionally is a much more steady store of value, whereas silver is a lot more volatile relative to gold. 
However, historically, the ratio of gold to silver has been around 70 units of silver per one unit of gold, which means on average over the past, I don't know, 100 years or something in that range, to buy one weight, one unit of gold, say one gold coin that weighs a particular amount, you would need 70 equivalent weight silver coins in order to buy that one gold coin. However, the current ratio, last I checked, which was about a month ago, this could be different, but the current gold to silver ratio was actually around 120 pieces of silver to one piece of gold, which if we look at the overall average trend, and we look at what happens in market downturns, both gold and silver goes up, but generally silver bounces later, but also much harder than gold does. Now there are many reasons for this, but I'm not gonna talk about that. All that matters is that we know that we can put some of our portfolio into some gold ETF, and if we decide for a little bit more upside potential, silver as well, and even with just say 20%, 10% of our portfolio in those two, if we get another market downturn, we might make a nice little profit off those two holdings, which we can sell off when the market goes quite low to buy really, really cheap stocks, which means when the market recovers eventually, who knows when that is, no one has a crystal ball, but that can put us much further ahead over time. Okay, I realize I covered a lot in this video, but thank you for following all the way through to the end. If you like this video, please give it a like if you found it useful, and let me know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see next. Thank you very much.